Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Mixer Network. And today is WrestleMania Sunday. So I thought, not counting this year's WrestleMania, because it's not over yet, I am going to be ranking past WrestleManias. Now, there's a catch. Hold your breath. First, I need some ice cold water to go with it. But, I'm only going to be ranking WrestleManias from last year, so 36, all the way back to 24. That's because that's the first WrestleMania I have a vivid memory of watching. I've gone back and watched WrestleManias and matches from WrestleManias. But 24 was the first WrestleMania that I watched when I started watching and became a fan. Actually, WrestleMania 24 was actually, it's a good segue, WrestleMania 24 is the first WWE show I remember watching. Like, I may have watched stuff in the past before that, but that's like the the farthest, furthest back memory I have in my brain of watching. I remember sitting on the couch watching this WrestleMania. So let me see. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We have about 11 WrestleManias. No, actually, hold up. Hold up. I can't count for days. Ooh, we have 13 WrestleManias that I'm going to be ranking today. But first, before we rank them, let's go ahead and show off the mm, categories in this tier maker website. Take another sip of water. Because H2O is lit. But anyways, we have, starting at the bottom, we have pukes, pass, I, awesome, and swag. Swag is like top level, like as you couldn't tell, like. There's a huge gap between awesome and swag. So if there's any confusion about how close may be, that's what. And I won't do what some people do when it's in the row, rank them within the row. We're going to just put the 13 WrestleMania into their said categories. I don't think we're really going to get any in puke because I'm not really a hateful, quote, WWE fan. Like, I tend to enjoy 95, 99% of what I watch. So we have a good chance that a bunch of them will be in this top, top three. Because I am an actual fan compared to the haters that claim they go they go on to watch WWE, but then they all do is just critique. Like there's people I go on Twitter, there's people that go, oh, three hours of all, here we go. Like if you don't want to watch, what are you doing? Go go cook go go cook a macaroni pan or something. I don't know. Like do something else with your life instead of complaining about something that you want you claim you're wasting your life on. All right, after getting that rant out of the way. One more sip of water, because H2O is life. Let's begin. So, WrestleMania 24. Like I said, this is the first one I ever remember watching. And, yeah, actual memory, because I know this match, they had the matches of Ric Flair and Shawn Michaels, and Undertaker for an edge. But honestly, the most vivid memory I have from this show is the triple threat with Cena, Orton, and Triple H for the WWE Championship. And, I liked it. I just, oh, man, I mean, it's really hard to rank this one because, obviously, like I said, I've gone back and watched WrestleMania, this WrestleMania, but I'm basing it on off when I watched it, and since I can only remember the one match, and it had a great finish with Orton doing the punt kick at the end, we're going to put it in Ike, just for that, just, it may be better than that, but I'm just basing it off of my memory of watching it, so sorry to apologize to all the fans from WrestleMania 24, but... We continue. And like I said, remember, I'm not going to rank any of the WrestleManias up to 24. So, all these ones. I'm going to wait all the ones, like, from 2004, not even on here. Whoever made this is. Eh. Anyways, let's move on. WrestleMania 25, the 25th anniversary. Now, this one was good. There was the triple threat with Cena, Big Show, and Edge. Triple H and Orton. And then the first Taker Michaels match. I also like the show. This show was really good overall, because I remember there was the Cursed Jericho versus the Legends. CM Punk won the Money in the Bank for the second time. I mean, this was a good show. But, I mean... Because this show has the what most people say is the greatest WrestleMania match of all time. And Shawn Michaels versus The Undertaker. But, besides that... I want to say Ike, because it just doesn't really stand out as 
I can guarantee some of the ones coming up will. So, all right, moving on. WrestleMania 26. This one, this one's I think is definitely better than 25. There's more of a story to the main event match between the rematch between Undertaker and Shawn Michaels. Um, there's just so many great stories that went into this show that made this show more of a hyped up show. I mean, even Bret Hart versus Mr. McMahon. I mean, the story was there. It was countless years in the making, even though it was based on a real story. Um, Batista and John Cena. Uh, what's it? Edge and Chris Jericho. Jer- Edge coming back at the Royal Rumble and winning the and making a surprise return on, and facing him at WrestleMania. But I mean, I don't, I say I mean like it's bad. I'm just trying to go through the most of the show in the head, based on what I can remember, because I don't want to look up stuff. If it if I can remember stuff, that makes it more of an impact in my, you know, favorite. But um, I'm really hard. I'm just really hard trying to think of other matches. I know there was CM Punk versus Rey Mysterio. Oh, and this is the one with the Legacy Triple Threat. Hmm. I'm going to put this one in Ike, though, just because it's just not up to the standards of the other ones, in my opinion. But, don't get me wrong, because, like I said, it's Ike. Like, it's not down here where it could be pitiful upon, if you know what I'm trying to say. Moving on. WrestleMania 27. Now, this one, like, a bunch of the future ones coming up has a special place, because... WrestleMania, usually, I get together with friends or family to watch it. And some manias more than others have more people. But I remember this one, I was with a few of my friends. And I just remember being there watching with friends. But, like, uh, The Miz versus John Cena with The Rock coming out. Rock was the host of WrestleMania. The whole storyline was great. The match and him coming back out, restarting the matchup. Even, like, the Raw GM computer comes on and tells how the match is going to... What's going to happen next for The Rock? It's like, it doesn't matter what you think, etc., etc. There was that. Um, I think there was... I mean, besides that... I know there was other matches like Triple H and The Undertaker. But, Lily, that stands out the most from that show for me. Honestly. So, we're going to... I mean, the fact that I can remember one match mostly in my head says something a lot about it. But I still have that strong bond with it based on it being with my friends. But I'm going to go ahead. I don't think it's on the standards of these ones. So I'm going to go with pass. And like I said, that doesn't mean it's bad because I enjoyed it. But I, I'm, I'm ranking it here. So it's going to be below those three. Coming up is WrestleMania 28, Once in a Lifetime. Now that show, see, as more the further we get in, the more I'm gonna remember more because they're more recent. But WrestleMania 28, that was a great overall show, kicking off with a hot start of Sheamus winning the World Heavyweight Championship in 18 seconds. I mean, that's a hype way to get into it. Kane and Randy Orton, that was a great match. Unpredictable with Kane winning. Uh, like I said, Once in a Lifetime, that was a great match. That was also uh, unpredictable finish. No one could call that one. I think majority of people thought Cena was going to win that one based on when they did Rock and Hogan and like he passed the torch, whatever. But Rock said no. But um, there was that. There was, I think there was Cody Rhodes in the big show. That was a great storyline build up. I never read that the spear hit him right in the, the nuts. But oh, and there was also Triple H and The Undertaker. Oh, hoo hoo. Man, I'm going to have to go with, it's better than everyone on here so far. We're going to go with awesome. Alright, moving on. I mean, not to give it a, a reason for it, but it just outranks the other ones. There's so many more epic moments. The more epic moments you have creates more memories for me and as like the fans, and that's why it's ranked up higher. WrestleMania 29. Hmm. Gotta take a sip, think about this for a moment. WrestleMania 29. 
This is a Cena and Rock rematch, but this time for the WWE title. The Shield had their first WrestleMania match. Uh, Taker versus Punk. Brock versus Triple H. I mean, this is a great show. Got a great lineup. But I don't think I would rank it as high as 28, so we're going to put it in height. Alright, so we got one, two, three, four. Seven more to go. Seven more to go. Alright. WrestleMania 30. WrestleMania 30 was actually great overall. Like, everything was... This show was from bell, bell to bell, start of show to end of show, pyro to ending graphic. This show was... This show was phenomenal. <laughs> not to be pun intended, because we're not to that era of AJ Styles yet. However, though... WrestleMania 30, Daniel Bryan wins the title. The streak ends. Probably the most shocking moment in wrestling history. WWE history. Uh, those two moments. The opening segment with Rock, Austin, and Hogan. That was great. The Battle Royal. Hmm. This is, that is top tier. Well, should it go in swag or awesome? I mean, it is such a great rewatch value. I'm, I'm going to go with swag. Alright, now. WrestleMania 31. Now, this one is usually highly regarded by most fans as being probably one of the best WrestleManias ever. But this is my tier list. So, we had Sting's debut versus Triple H. Epic with DX and NWO coming out. Of course, Rollins cashed in in the epic main event between Roman and Brock. Epic ladder match in the beginning. Epic, epic, epic everywhere in the show. And I mean, I think that just takes the cake. I think it's got to be up. It's got to be up here in swag. Even the Orton Rollins match was great. That epic RKO was probably the best RKO of all time, arguably. So yeah, that punches the ticket to the top. WrestleMania 32. Now, 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 now. This one. This one is not. Highly regarded. Take it a year later. Not highly regarded by most fans. But it's unjustified, really, if you think about it. Because the main event was Roman Reigns versus Triple H. And this match, it was good. It was good. But people just tend to hate on the match because it was Roman Reigns. It, it distracts you from the fact of how good of a match it was, but because Roman Reigns won the title, and because Roman Reigns existed, really to sum it up, people sh shit on this show. But you forget how many great matches they were. Shane and The Undertaker, the, he the Hell in a Cell drop. Shaq's surprise appearance in the Battle Royale, and Baron Corbin's great debut. W what a way to debut. Man. Another opening great ladder match. AJ Styles debut. It's a great show. Most people would probably rank it at the bottom. But I'm going to put it at awesome. Just because it's not on the level of 31 and 30. Because those ones, to be a great show, you got to go from start to finish. And just have me, have me in for the whole show. Not to say that I was bored. But WrestleMania 33. Now, this one, personally, <laughs> swag. <laughs> We're going to say it like that. I was there for this WrestleMania, but that's not just me being giving favoritism, favoritism. But this show, like I said, from start to finish, was great. I'm talking so much, let me drink some water. This show had... At this point, I think this is when WrestleMania started to have way more matches like they do nowadays. WrestleMania 33. Like, so many great matches. Opening it with AJ and Shane. A match people usually think AJ, uh, Shane McMahon shouldn't be on the card. But usually he puts on one of the best matches. So I don't know why all the hate's for. 
Um, the Hardys returning. Probably the loudest, one of the loudest reactions ever. Brock and Goldberg, and for all the Goldberg haters, this match wasn't bad. Goldberg and Brock was so high-paced. I remember standing up like this entire match. It was just so fast and so many big moves out of nowhere. Randy and Bright, even though that's a match people seem to hate. But it was kind of cool, and people think it was stupid that they put all those graphics on the on the ring, but that that was, you had to be there, I mean, just the, the aura of that, and then we're winning out of nowhere, literally at the end, it was great, I can't say more about that, and then the ending, I can just vividly remember this image in my head, after Roman Reigns won, and he gets on the stage, you can watch this on the, the show, he goes to do his signature fists in the air pose, and the pile behind him, just that image right there, that image, I'll just never forget that image. Like, that was the perfect image that sounded up that WrestleMania. And then, you know, I'll know. Even though it was said on the Last Ride documentary at The Undertaker that he didn't really like this. And it was supposed to be his last match. Let's be real here. If he would, it, That's what fans do. Once they hear something, it changes their perspective on things. But before hearing that, this match, this match was good. Even though he knew he was out of shape, but... I knew at the time watching this that this was a great match. And if it was his last match, I would have been fine with it. Moving on to WrestleMania 34. We have three more to go. And we are already almost coming up in 17 minutes, but lols. You're getting my full perspective. You're not just a quick ranking video. WrestleMania 34. Another show that's kind of looked down upon based on... Two words. Roman Reigns. The match was the high pace at the end with Brock Lesnar. I will say, not as good as 31 match. But, finishers going crazy. And, it was a great match. And plus, the ending when he got cut open, that, that whole scene was epic. And I remember going into this show. We're going to go on a little rant here again. But, after WrestleMania 33, I remember everyone was praising over the guy called Dave Meltzer. Saying that, Roman Reigns is going to beat Brock Lesnar next year at WrestleMania, and that's going to be the build. And then, and partially got it right, Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar was the main event. But I was saying, no, but Brock Lesnar's going to win. Even when I was there with my friends and family, when we all got together to watch this WrestleMania, we usually make a marker board of who's going to win the matches we predict. I was the only one to pick Brock Lesnar, because I know what, you know why? Because Brock Lesnar was going to win. And what happened? Brock Lesnar won. Yep. And so I got excited, hopped up, it was pretty, pretty funny. And I'll tell you another story about that in 35, but a time when I picked no one else. No one else's same idea of who's gonna win a match. But besides that match, this show was great. We had so many great matches on this show. Uh, the opening triple threat with Rollins, Finn Balor, and the Miz. It was great. Uh Ronda Rousey, how are we going to skip over that? Ronda Rousey's debut, probably the best match on that show. From start to finish. Like, you're captivated. And then the story of Undertaker making his surprise return against John Cena and Elias. It's confusing everybody. It's great. And Taker beats him in two minutes. And just, that doesn't take down the quality of this. I mean, that, that fit perfectly with the story. Like, Cena was talking so much, so much garbage and Taker came in and just told him to shut up. So I'm going to rank this one, plus all the unpredictable moments, I'm going to put this one also in swag. Alright, two more to go. WrestleMania 35 and then WrestleMania 36. WrestleMania 35 was, I think this was probably, I think they said recorded the longest WrestleMania all the way through, not counting there being two nights based on this one and this year's. Um, WrestleMania 35. Yeah, I think I already know this one's going to be swag. The countless moments, and the way they they laid out this show, having like big matches from the start, in the middle, and the end, made it perfect. From Rollins opening with Lesnar, that got everyone hyped. I remember, now this one, I remember I was with a good group of my friends. Some of the friends we did the fight night with. But, Rollins getting into it, winning the title, I got caught everyone off guard, it was hype, even though, 
I'm not saying like kind of run off guard. Like, I gotta take that one for Allen to win. But like, I know everyone's getting hyped into it. Um, what else we got? Kofi Mania. I mean, that that speaks for itself. I mean, I can just remember watching that moment. It would probably be one of my favorite WrestleMania memories ever. That one, two, three, everyone got hyped. Kofi finally got his moment. And then they had the women's main event, first time ever. You know, people claim this match is bad based on just the ending. I honestly think, after all this time, people calling that botch or whatever, I still think to this day it was planned. It was planned to be that way. And people yet. Claim that is the reason that match was bad, even though the whole match was pretty good. And those are just the three big, the three big moments from that show. Not to forget literally everything else that happened on that show. To take away from that, and I was telling you earlier about the time when Brock won, and no one else called it. Out of all my friends, I was the only one that said Baron Corbin's going to beat Krang in his last match. And when he did, everyone was like, "Bruh," but I was like, "I called it." <laughs> That pretty much sums it up. And yeah, like I said, so many great matches on that show. Just start to finish, it was great. So that's why it goes with swag. And now WrestleMania 36, the last one we're going to get on here. Um, WrestleMania 36 was different. I'm going to go on a rant here probably in a moment. But people tend to... Say this man, this whole show, the two nights, all of it was awful. And not for the reason of the matches being bad and the talent or anything that, anything like that. Basically for the fact that there was no crowd. And I kind of think that's, that's a dumb, goofy reason to crap on a show. Because here's my take I've had. Ever since the whole pandemic started. And when they had no crowd for a while. People think no crowd ruins the show. But in reality, how many times countlessly in the last years, when there was a crowd, the crowd decides to ruin what's going on? Honestly. So I thought it was a great, great, great takeaway to show you what it's like to have no fans. And I'd rather have no fans at all than fans crapping on something for no for stupid reasons. So, I mean, they had this coming, honestly. But, sorry to get off that rant, but let's talk about this WrestleMania and where I'm going to rank it. The Boneyard match, which we would find out be Undertaker's last match. That was a great introduction of cinematic matches, even though they did some in the past. That was great all the way through. Seeing a Bray match is just, just chaotic of a match. It wasn't really like a match, but it was just... It was different, but it kept you into it. That triple threat with Morrison, Kingston, and Uso was probably one of the best matches. And then now we talk about, like, Braun and Drew both getting their big moment win titles. Yeah, there was no crowd, and it would have been cool to see reactions. But you just know it meant a lot. Especially when Drew, like at the end, put his hand on the screen. He knows that there was people around the world, including me watching it, that were making noise as if there was a crowd. So it wasn't like this show should just be forgotten because there was no crowd. This still had the same impact. And like the other manias, like this one had so much from start to finish. Even with no crowd, the show was epic. So we're going to put this final Wrestlemania in swag. Alright. Now let's review what we have right now. We have in swag is 30, 31, 33, 34, 35, 36. Awesome is 28 and 32. Ite is 24, 25, 26, and 29. And pass is 27. Yeah, I think that's how I would rank it. Alright folks, that's going to wrap up me ranking WrestleManias. And I know this was a long video, but 
just took my time talking about WrestleManias, maybe some memories of my life watching them, and yeah. All right, until next time, hit that subscribe button. This has been the Nixon Network, the only sickness you want. This is my evolution. Think me now, I won't leave you forsaken. See through my eyes, and I know you'll awaken. Reclaiming my voice, so I won't be mistaken. Enter the walls of your brain like a breaking, but it ain't hate, it's a source of relating. Vision be blurry, but destined for greatness.